How you doing? I'm Philip Cooper, Total Roofing and Construction. Uh, we're known as TRC. Uh, today we're going to go into our window division. Um, and we're going to describe flashing windows uh, for new construction homes. Uh, that could be whether it's an actual residential house, a playhouse, an addition, or even your dog house. Uh, we really want to showcase you how to properly flash a window. Uh, people so often get caught up in, ooh, it's a lifetime window, look at this bay window. That's all fine and good, but if you don't have the perimeter installed appropriately, when it rains or those harsh winters that we often encounter, you're going to have issues with that gorgeous window. You know, 10 years from now, you're going to be calling that same contractor, or they may be out of business because of the poor workmanship they provided you. So, today, just grab a notepad. Uh, Feel free to write down any notes. Uh, do you think see any issues that we provided you? Uh, let us know. Uh, contact our webpage or even give us a, a home office a call. Uh, we're here just to help you. Um, but if there's anything you could help us with, we would gladly look forward to it. So today, as we mentioned, we're going to be showing you how to flash a window. Uh, first, I want to review the product that we're going to be having to cut into when we flash a window. Uh, and what that is, is it's going to be your house wrap. Uh, today we're going to be using a ply dry house wrap. Uh, this was supplied to us by Richard's Building Supply. And this is a really critical element to protecting your home's exterior. Uh, once you actually get it, uh, you're going to wrap your entire exterior house. Uh, it's going to cover your windows, your doors, your garage. Uh, this product is actually going to protect your house for about four months uh, in new, new construction for residential homes. Um, it acts as a moisture barrier, uh, so it kind of restricts any water from entering your house if it gets past that vinyl siding or that brick. Uh, this particular product, uh, you may know something similar as Tyvek. Uh, these type of products are on about 80% of new construction homes. Uh, Contractors love it. It's a very light product. It's durable. It's long-lasting. Uh, there's really not much to hate on it. I mean, you can always upgrade it. There's products that have increased R value, uh, that are thicker, and that are much heavier. So you have a big, you have a better peace of mind uh, knowing that. But today we're going to use the plastic. If you're going to install this, there's two methods you can use. You can use the nailing method, you can use a hammer tacker method. Uh, you may have seen something similar to this. Uh, it's just a hand stapler. Uh, it can use staple sizes of 1 4th, 5 16 and 3 8 uh, The reason we prefer that is because uh, for installers it's actually much easier on them. Uh, they can wrap a house uh, much quicker than you could a hand nail system. But if you live in an area with harsh winters as well as a lot of rain and moisture, uh, go with the hand nailing technique. But if you do that, don't just use carpentry nails. Uh, use their called button nails. And what a button nail is, it's a plastic cap nail uh, that when you nail it, the nail to anchor this, a plastic head will actually be on top. And so when you have moisture collecting on that plastic, it won't disrupt that nail's livelihood. It won't start rusting, it won't start deteriorating. Uh, so when you actually choose what method to use, let's say you line up your wrap. Uh, today it's actually much easier than it was. Uh, the manufacturer provides you guidelines. Uh, these are about every foot, and from it will be about three and a half feet from top to bottom. So. Actually, wrapping your house is not difficult, uh, but it's a very critical element because it is your water barrier. And I uh, just wanted to give you a little brief overview. Uh, now let's actually start trying to flash that window for you. Uh, we're ready for our window flashing tutorial. Uh, the reason we're actually just showcasing the flashing rather than the whole window process at one in one video is because this is such an important step. Uh, for your window. The reason for it, you can have a lifetime window in here, but if you don't flash properly, that 50 to a lifetime window is going to cause headaches in 10 years from now. Uh, so that's really why we want to take it one step at a time. Uh, 
work really well on one thing, get good at it, and then go to the next. Uh, so the four things we're going to need before we actually blast this window, uh, we're going to need our adhesive. We're using a tight seal window adhesive. See that up close. And I'll put all the products uh, at the end of the video as well. Uh, that's a 4 inches by 33 foot roll. Uh, it's a good product. Got that at home improvement store. Better ones you can find at building warehouses such as uh, Richard Building Supplies or an Allied Building Supplies. The second product is an all weather exterior tape. This is aluminum foil tape. Uh, we like to use this one because it has a wide range in terms of temperatures that it could use. Uh, after we make our cuts, there's going to still be a couple few inches exposed and we're just going to cover it up. Tools you'll need. A roller. Uh, if you don't have one, it's not a big headache. Don't worry about it. You can use your hand or anything. Uh, even the rubber of a, a hammer. Uh, that's just to make sure everything's just sealed tight as well as a blade. Now, if you don't trust yourself uh, with a blade, I recommend grabbing either an L or a ruler to make your cuts. Uh, pencil them out, uh, mark it. I just, I've been, I've done many of these, so I'm just used to making my cuts on site. So, before we make our cuts, everyone has their own way of flashing job. Um, you can actually grab an L if you want to make your cuts aligned, um, which I recommend if you're either just entering the trade or maybe you're doing the shed window in your backyard by yourself. Uh, so today we're actually going to be cutting right above, about an inch and a half, down, and then we're going to just angle it. Uh, that's the best way we've been using so far. Um, if you want to do it a different way, um, as I said, there's a lot of tricks of the trade, but before we make a cut, what we're going to do is we're going to review the window we're about to install. And what that means is we're going to read the product specs of a window. So let's say this is the window we're about to install. Uh, usually they come with an informational guide. And we want to make sure we're in line with the product specs because if there's something that's going to jeopardize that warranty, we need to just redo how we flash it. Because regardless if you have a, a lifetime window, if this is a 10-year flash, you're going to have issues with 10 years from now. There's going to be leaking, and it's not that window. Uh, so just read up, read the fine print, and just be aware. So now that we have our blade, uh, we have our house wrap, we have any cuts dismissed, we've read our product guide. Uh, we're going to grab our blade. Um, this is important that we make cuts that are appropriate. So first we're going to do a 45 degree cut down the angle. Okay. Um, this one, it's common to do it here too if you want. But we're actually going to go down the center. Now the reason for that, uh, as I'll show you right here, we can fold this around to make the sides watertight. Same with this. And then this, with the access, we can fold over. Okay. So now that you have the cut, uh, let's get ready to actually anchor the plastic. And once the plastic's anchored, we'll be able to flash it appropriately. Alright, so after we make our cuts, next what we're going to do is that extra flab that's hanging, you're going to bend it around the stud, um, the perimeter stud, and right now I just grabbed uh, a carpentry nail and just much just to hold it in place for now. Uh, you could use the aluminum tape in which I showed, uh, that's always been used. 
First, it's time to use our adhesive. Uh, we're going to grab our tape, measure it out, and you're going to want to go three inches past the sill on both sides. So you're going to really want about 27 and a half inches of adhesive. Uh, we always start at the bottom. Uh, that's the one thing regardless if uh, I have installed improperly, you always start at the bottom. Uh, it's kind of like, it's more of a roofing thing, but it applies to windows as well. So, then you grab your blade, cut it. Uh, there's other ways too, in terms of some people will cut half the adhesive backing off and then do one section at a time. So, the first piece is always the most important. Uh, now, you got to remember if you get uh, a 6 or an 8 inch roll, uh, it would be easier. Uh, we grab the 4 just based off the size of the window. So now, we have it, 3 inches. And you got to remember we did those 45 degree cuts. Um, we don't necessarily need to cover them right now. Uh, when we go back to put that aluminum tape over, that's when we'll have to cover them. But what we want to do is we want to be at least two inches on the sill after this. So, an industry that would be just slightly get that back in. So watch your fingers. And only do half. Okay, so when you actually put it up, it'll be half and half. Um, half. Uh, that's when you can pull out your roller. Grab your blade, and then you're going to want to do right along it, your incision. And it'll lay flat. There you go. And if it starts bubbling, try to pull it out and flatten it back out. Uh, the bubbles it might not seem bad, but a lot of bubbles, you got to remember, you still have to put that window in. And uh, if your window's already snug, maybe a quarter inch, that bubble actually may affect your window. Um, it may make it unlevel. Uh, it's just if you can avoid it, uh, this is really the best time to do that. So next, we're going to do on top of the sole. Because this is really one of the, you really want to protect this wood. This stud's really important uh, in terms of just the sake of the whole window. A lot of leaks pretty much occur in that area. So you're going to do the 27 as well. You're going to want it to go up along the wall as well, about three inches on each side. Some people will say six to four, uh, and then you have people that say eight. Uh, it really just varies upon the installer. Um, that's why it's one of the running jokes. Everyone installs it differently. Um, I'm just trying to show you the way we do it in a way that actually works. Uh, I can't tell you that this is the only way, as many people will say. Alright, now you got it cut. Peel it. You're going to want to start at one side. Go about that four to three inches, and then slowly, but you got to make sure you don't want your crest of the new to sit right there. You kind of want it to overhang. And the reason for that is, if they're sitting water, they'll get in there. So, get that top, and 
And then you're going to bend right over the top. Some people will snip the corners a little because it's already protected. Uh, it's a really good material. Um, very easy to work with. And also there are adhesives that are stretch proof. You don't even necessarily need to make a cut. They'll, they'll stretch to where you need it. So now you have this. Now we want to work our sides, and then we're going to get to the top. Also, another thing a lot of people do, uh, the top part, because it is the top, they'll tape it, just so they don't install it improperly. Use that aluminum tape, just put that. So time to measure the sides. You're going to want to go right up to there, and then three inches past, so you're looking at about 38 inches. The typical flash, depending on how many windows and the size, is usually always the most difficult. Uh, based off, if there is a manufacturer spec, uh, you always want to really follow their guidelines. Because um, if you don't, uh, you really are going to have an issue with warranty. And uh, homeowners do not want warranty issues. Uh, half the time they don't want to buy a warranty. Because uh, a lot of a lot of roofing products, uh, to even get those lifetime warranties, you need to get five of their accessories or something along those lines. So you gotta always be cautious and watch out. Uh, Two inches. Okay, well, that's common. Sometimes people will nail it uh, just so it doesn't come back and forth. But we don't want to nail it until we know that's where we want it. So we have that. Now, this is actually about an inch, two inches above the sill. So we're going to grab our blade, make a little incision here. Roll it down. Roll it down. And lay it flat. Okay. Now we have that. Now you'll notice there's kind of like a slight half inch that's cut here in that house red. And that's where that aluminum foil tape's going to come in after. Um, we're just going to go right over that once we're all done. So once you have your first part and half on the sill, we're going to grab our adhesive again. We're going to do the same same distance, about 27. You can measure it out. Uh, we have our ruler still. And then we're going to blade it. This one's going to be a little different because we're going to be going inside of the window. Uh, this is actually one of the more critical uh, because if we have, if we lay it here, and this is where the crease is, when water comes down, it might enter that crease. So that's why it's really important that we start bottom up, similar to a roof. You have your starter strip and you work your way up. You never start from the top down because that's just not how water will flow based off gravity. So it's really important that we do this. Uh, always start from the bottom. Pretty sticky, good old tight grip. Alright, so we're going to lay it, and we're going to want this to go up the wall about three and three inches as well.
And we're going to want that top sill part to overhang the, the first tight seal. All right, and now this is where our roller comes into play. There's also some of the higher quality adhesives that you can purchase at building product stores uh, that are stretchable. So you actually, around here, you will never have to make a cut. Um, they're just that strong of material. Right. Now the next part, we're going to do our sides. We're going to do these. Um, the way I cut it, it's not too bad because we have our house wrap on the inside too. Uh, but it's always, we always prefer to have as much adhesive near the window as we possibly can. Um, so again, let's grab our tape. And also we're going to go three inches above the window as well as three inches below. So we're looking at about 38 inches. If you're working on a shed or something like that, you don't necessarily need to flash to this degree. Uh, but my question to you is, um, how often are you going to use your shed? Um, if it's a greenhouse for the winter or anything like that. So, we're going to line it up. We're going to want it directly to cover this seal right here. You're only going to really need one here. Uh, roll it out. Some people will do an interior as well. Oh, it is up? Okay. Do the same on the opposite side. Um, and don't recommend getting this on your clothes either. Um, it will ruin it if it's on for a long time. over if you have any access. Grab that roller. So, so far we have our base along the sill, watertight. We have our, our sides exposed, we're going to do our insides. Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Uh, it's just, it's better to be safe. 30 and a half. Uh, just because, as we mentioned before, how often do you install the windows? Um, and that's the case uh, when people have issues 10 years from now. They'll say, well, I have lifetime windows. And we'll be like, well, how is it installed?
roll it out. And then we're going to do one more. And then you should be good on here. Now, the top part's really interesting. You see this overhang? You don't want to actually go over the plastic on this side. Uh, you're going to go right underneath. You're going to do the same thing as you did on the bottom, but what you're going to do is right over the top with the house rep. And the reason for that is so water doesn't necessarily get in there, it just drips right off. So we're going to stop here. We're going to do the step again. And then the curl. It's going to be tight, roll it out. Um, after a while, it's going to get repetitive um, if it's not already. But the reason it has to be, uh, you really need to break it down and continually to install it the right way. Uh, so many people, they just get caught up and let's get the window installed and then they move on. Uh, but I mean, there really is a right way to do it, even if it does take a, a little longer. Uh, rather than to get in and get out. We're going to go right up to the top of that plastic. We're not going to go over it. And we're gonna, that's a little longer. Uh, longer is not bad in this situation. Uh, this adhesive should be on for a while in terms of longevity unless you have the product effect. Now here, if you see this, house wrap overhangs. This is where our aluminum tape comes into handy. Uh, now we're just going to tape right over it. Uh, that's why it's really good to get a strong exterior tape, one that can actually deal with the type of temperatures in your area. Uh, some people use duct tape. Uh, duct tape after a few years definitely, if there's a lot of moisture, can actually get damage. Uh, so we definitely recommend going with exterior specific tape. And this tape's not expensive at all. Um, it's about $6. And it's a very, very extreme product. We use on a lot of exterior uh, repairs. Um, it's aluminum foil. It's reflective. Sticky. It always helps when you're getting taped. Uh, and you're going to want to go right over that 45 degree cut. After it, you're going to just take a roller to the whole thing eventually. Alright. There's 
there's that. There's that. Now you want to double check the bottom 45s too. Uh, a lot of times uh, when people cut a 45, they'll cut a little further than 3 inches, which we did here, uh, which isn't a big deal by any means. But as long as it's exposed, it could be an issue. Uh, that's why we always like to double check. And on top of that, check the, per the perimeter of your tie bed, uh, about 3 to 4 feet. And the reason for that is let's say you have a cut surrounding it, we're in the position where we can tape it up right now. Uh, we don't have to wait, we don't have to rely that maybe the siding guy will do it or the other window guy will do it. We know that there's a, a peace of mind if we just do it right now. Uh, so it's being a little proactive, but it really can make a difference. I mean, if you're working in the area, it should only take a minute or two. Now you're going to want to roll everything out. And that's a window flashing. Uh, if you notice, it should almost look like just an outline. And then you have your axis. Uh, now, after we actually get the perimeter taped off, uh, we'd like to grab the window that we're using, if it's available. Uh, just to actually give it a test to see if it fits. To make sure there's no bubbles or extreme areas that we need to roll out. And that's it. So, it's really neat because it fits. It's still loose. Uh, there's about a quarter inch on the right side and about half an inch on the left side. So we obviously need to adjust it to make it level. Uh, but other than that, everything looks really well tight and sealed. Um, so you would just have to stay tuned and we'll actually show you how to install this window properly. Uh, so thank you for tuning in and I, I hope you appreciate it. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below and uh, we'll try to help you out as soon as possible. Thanks a lot, and stay tuned.